All right, in the last video, we looked at how to make responsive canvases for Matter.js. In this video, we'll look at how to use SVGs as our bodies that interact with the paths they create, as well as making them responsive to browser width. All right, let's have a look at what I have going on in Webflow, in the Navigator. The main thing I have is this SVGs with a display set to none. If I set that to block, we can see that this is where I have my SVGs. Nothing too crazy about these. I will show you just after this how to make these and import them into Webflow. Um, but let's hide that div again. And then I have another div called matter container class. That's just 100% width and 100 viewport heights. And then also an ID of matter container. Our code is going to look for this ID, so we need that in there. The grid that I have under here, this is just an absolute position div that has this nice little background, uh, which is controlled by some custom CSS in this embed right here. Nothing needed for this project. I just thought the grid looked nice. And then the other thing to note about the Webflow project is where we're importing our scripts here in the before closing body tag. I have the matter.js script imported, but I also have this path seg and this poly decomp. The path seg is a dependency of the matter.svg API. So you can see it says here to use this model, you need the SVG path seg polyfill. So I went and got that, but then it turns out that that polyfill also depends on this poly decomp if you wanna make SVGs that have enclosed shapes. I even didn't use the letter O in this one because it was having trouble building that, um, but you'll just kind of have to do a little bit of trial and error. For the most part, once I got these two dependencies in, things were working just great. And then lastly, I'm importing a code sandbox file here. I used Adobe Illustrator to make these SVGs. I just take the text and let's say I want the letter W and it's still a text, but if I right click and do create outlines, it turns it into a vector shape, which is great. Now the main thing you wanna do is make sure that this W value is set to 100 pixels. W stands for width, of course, up here. The way we're gonna scale our SVGs when we create them and when we resize the browser is dependent upon the, si the initial size of these SVGs being 100 pixels. So this is very important. To get this into Webflow, I'll just select the shape, hit Command C, come back over to Webflow and in my embed, I'm gonna open the code editor, I'll delete what I have already, and paste. Now, this path is important of where we want to. Come on, Webflow, why you gotta be publishing timeout right now? I'm trying to record a video. Anyways, we're gonna add an ID to this path called matter path. And we'll save that, and then I'm just gonna copy this, save and close, and I'll add it to this one because, again, we want that matter path in there. So save and close, and go ahead and publish this. The code I have right now uses my matter.js better boilerplate code as a starting point for um, getting things on the screen and having a responsive canvas. I also added these um, constants up here and then I'm just creating a circle using the create circle function and create circle is defined down here uh, as you can see. So if I save and I load my Webflow live site, we see we just get a circle that bounces around. Uh, so I've covered how to make circles and do all that. So for this part, we're going to just go into how to make the SVGs. And to start, so these constants, I'll start with that. We're going to have our SVG path selector. That's the ID of matter path that we already defined in our Webflow project. The SVG width in pixels is equal to 100. Again, I talked about this in the Illustrator project. And then we have SVG width as percent of container width, and that is 0.3. And all this is is say, I want my SVGs to be 30% of the container width. And so we're gonna do some math later. I will show you how to do that. Um, but let's go ahead and keep moving. The first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna define some more aliases. We're gonna need matter.body, matter.svg, matter.vector, and matter.vertices. And we're just gonna store these in the corresponding variable names so that they're easier to type and take up less space. Next, we're gonna call this function that we haven't made yet called create SVG bodies. Now let's go ahead and define that function. So I have create SVG bodies down here. The first thing we want to do is get all the paths that are in our Webflow project that have that SVG path selector of matter path. And then we're going to loop through all of the paths and this for each function is what's doing the looping. And as we're looping, we're going to access each path individually via this path variable. First, we'll define a variable called vertices. This is equal to SVG dot path to vertices of path. So this is a special function supplied by the matter SVG module that converts our path to vertices, which is what matter.js uses as physics library coordinate points. Then we'll define a value called scale factor. The scale factor is equal to matter container dot client width times SVG width as percent of container width, and then divide all that by SVG width in pixels. 
This is a little confusing, so I made a quick Excala draw on what's exactly going on here. So we know our SVG width is 100 pixels, right? And then we also know that we can access our container width, and that just equals to matter container dot client width. And we know that we want our SVG to be, say, 30% of the canvas width, so we know that that would be just width times 0 0.3. So our final function would be 100 pixels times whatever scale factor we need equals width times 0 0.3. And so we'll calculate a scale factor that we need of width times 0 0.3 divided by 100. Unfortunately, Matter.js doesn't really have a set size or like set width. They only have the scale option available to us. So we have to just do a little math to get the scale factor that we need. Back in our code, we have the scale factor. So now let's go ahead and scale the vertices by that. So we'll, we'll redefine vertices as vertices.scale. We'll pass it those vertices that we already defined, and then the scale factor for scale x and the scale factor for scale y. Now we're going to use this bodies.fromVertices function that Matter.js supplies. And the first thing we'll give it is an x coordinate. For the x coordinate, I'm doing that based on where we are in the loop. So that's why we're using index here. This is just 0, 1, 2, 3 for however many paths that we have. And then I'll just times it by the width in pixels. If you're using a lot more SVGs, then you might run the risk of going outside the bounds. And so you might want to just hard code this uh, or find something different to change it to. The Y position is just set to zero so that it spawns at the top. And then I'm passing in the vertices to create the body from. Now that we have our SVG body, we can simply add it to the world. If I save this and run, we can see our bodies are now in the world. They're kind of locked together, but that's because they're spawning so close, and that's okay. The color is also all messed up because these are the Matter.js default colors. So let's make this a little bit prettier. Back in the code, I'll just pretty this up real quick. And then we're going to pass an object with friction, air friction, and restitution to make this a little bit more fun. If I refresh now, you'll notice the Ws are going to be a little bit more bouncier and uh, fun to play around with. And then we'll also add a render argument to that object and we'll give it a fill style. And this is the fill color that I want. I think it's something like a gray. Yep, so now we have this color. However, you'll notice once the W comes back here, let me grab onto one of these. You'll notice we have these little white lines that are less than ideal, right? So this is kind of a, an artifacting from the SVG. So one way we can get around this is by defining a stroke style that's the same color as our fill color, and then also giving it a line width of one. And now if we save and refresh, we'll see these look like they have a really nice solid color. Our SVGs still aren't responsive to browser width, so if you did this on something like mobile, it would look way too big. So let's go ahead and fix that now. In our code, we'll define a function called scale bodies. We're gonna get all the bodies, which we can get from calling composite.allbodies and passing in engine.world as an argument. And then we'll loop through all the bodies. As we loop through, the for each gives us access to each body. And we're going to check if is static is true, we return. Is static is set for anything that's like a wall in our, um, in our scene, and we don't want to scale those. We just want to scale all the bodies that are moving around. Next, we'll get variables min and max. We're destructuring these off of body.bounds. And we're going to use that to get the width of the body. Again, Matter.js doesn't give us a convenient way to grab a width of a body. So we're going to call max.x minus min.y and store that as body width. Next, we'll define a scale factor. This is very similar to the math above, although you'll see we're dividing by body width this time instead of 100 pixels, because the body width may be changed by the time we're scaling bodies now, but we know when we start that it's going to be 100 pixels. Next, we'll call body.scale, and to that we'll pass our body, and we'll use scale factor for both the x and y scale values. Finally, we just need to call scale bodies, and save, and refresh, and check that everything is scaling all the way down and all the way up. All right, thanks for watching the video. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. A lot of people watch the video, but don't subscribe. Why would you do that? Also, click that thumbs up to give me a like if you like the video. Yeah.